I can eat some vegetables, not no, no, I'm not yeah. supposed to eat uh, I'm not supposed to eat oranges. Yeah. Are you supposed to avoid uh, vitamin K? Oh, you know how to take uh, it. No, she is. But she is. She is. Yeah. Stay away from vitamin K, yeah. Is she, well, she's already on blood thinner than test that. How'd you handle your, uh, was it first treatment or? Oh, I've had four. You've had four? How you doing? Tomorrow I'll be fine. How you doing? Fine so far. Okay. They told me next week I may have side effects. Really? After I get like in the middle of the week or something. You mean um, after you have it, a few days after you'd have side effects? Right. Okay. okay. And I, I'm doing the Lupron shots too. Okay. You've heard of those, haven't you? No. Oh, okay. It's a hormone that makes your testosterone lower. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a female hormone, they said. Huh. What is it? Lupron. O U T R O N. Huh. That feeds the cancer. Well, that's what they told me. Oh, it does. It yeah. feeds the cancer. Uh -huh. But so you don't want to be feeding it. Right. Yeah. So he's taking the other medicine. Oh, really? Okay. Huh. Okay. Well, we have okay. we own a house on Lilac Lane. You know where that's So he's he's well, he's got he's done four and he's got thirty four to go. Does he have thirty eight of them? No, it's it's no, actually has 40 of them. Oh, forty. Okay. Thirty six to go. Okay. I was okay. right off fifteen. Yeah. Right My there. dad did this Boulevard. years yeah. ago. Yeah, he had right all those here. treatments. I don't know I if know it was the same, here. but it Medicine conquered the prostate yeah. cancer he yeah. had. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, he, he sure had okay. So they're treating well, the well, I'm not living there anymore. Sure, sure, okay. All right. Right now, he hasn't had that many effects. You know okay. Like yeah. yeah. He will. Okay. Well, I'm not planning on meeting him until July 27th again. So we'll see how he's doing by then. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's Margaret. Margaret, it's good to see you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Was Mary coming? Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I, I just can't keep up with, and I know it's out there. But I don't read your name. <laughs> oh. So I. So well, I sent I've her lost a message. Track of when your your meeting starts. Yeah. Are, but yeah. Mary told me, and so. I'm okay. Here because All right. Good. 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 Good to see you. Yeah. I've been missing you yeah. in these meetings. Is it okay if I take one of the scripture readings? Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Because I because we learn a lot here. Yeah. I want to tell you the other day, and I don't know what caused it, but I got up. And my blood sugar was like 400. What? I don't know what happened. Yeah. Uh, does, does things like that just happen just because it just happens? Uh, usually there's a cause yeah. for it. Well, Did you have a snack the night before? Seemed like just Did you normal. sleep well that night? Well, I think so. If, you, if your sleep's disturbed. Now, yeah. Sometimes I have cramps and I have to get up and walk. But that happens. Every okay. So often. Okay. So it's not. It, well, nothing... yeah, sleep really affects it. Well, I did because you have that. two different hormones that relate oh. to 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 uh, hunger and all of that, and they can cause the stress hormones, cortisol, and others well, to let me ask you be elevated. Since we're not in class right now. Okay, so I'm on metformin. Yeah. And can you take stuff like this to a point where it's not working as good, and you need to change? Probably. Well, that may be what I need to do. Are you taking the the maximum dose? Yeah. Of five hundred. Yeah. Two, a.m. Yeah. and p.m. That's a oh. two thousand a day. So I'm sure I can't go. Oh, higher. okay. Yeah. Right. See, and now I'm going to talk about a medication tonight that that we have good. a person in this congregation that yeah was on. She's lost all her weight. She lost what? All of her overweight. She lost. She was on insulin. She's off insulin. I don't know if she'll show it tonight or not. But well, I hope so. That'd be a good testimony. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it though. Because I don't want to go on insulin. Because you know you hear about stuff about insulin, but good grief, 
High blood sugar is not good either. Well, you don't want it. You don't want to go on insulin. No. There's so. other medications you can take. Okay. Plus, there's other ways to do it. Okay, so you're going to talk, talk about, about some yeah, of this. yeah. You're glad I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you um, so much for your time and yeah. all the information you give us. Yeah. Well, the the crowds have dwindled. Uh, last time I did this, I didn't get my camera to work properly. I'm putting it on YouTube. I'm oh. making these little short, little 60 second or less videos and putting it on YouTube. I can't and I usually have the stuff. minimum of uh, 35 views up to 1,200 views for one little video. Oh. So I don't know which ones are going to work, you know, best, but, but, but I can, I'll make about 40 videos from this even tonight. That doesn't work. You got a good mouth, right? Oh, yeah. And a good voice. Oh, it'll work. It's going <laughs> to okay. work. I've got it set up. I hope, so. So. I hope it doesn't yeah. mess up. Because then you're yeah. going to think, well, here she is, and it's not working. <laughs> oh, no, it's going to work tonight. Good. It's just the video. Yeah. You know, and you wouldn't look at the video anyway. You don't have a smartphone, do you? Mm -mm. Okay. So, I mean, that's I mean, why I'm basically, not... I'm straight TV and straight everything. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Mary should be here. Because she Pretty told quick, you about it. Sometimes she gets here before me. And then, I don't know if anyone. I I postponed it a week because last week we had storm. Well, we got a storm coming in now. Yeah, I know. But I don't that. know if it's actually going to hit us or not. Well, but some, I tell you what. It may stay north of us. Channel nine is usually the one I watch. I don't know why. Yeah. But because he's a pain. <laughs> <laughs> David Payne. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but they say they have all this real modern equipment. Yeah. You know what Gary England said, folks? If you want to know the weather, go look out the back door. Well, hey. Yeah. That's sometimes right. they say stuff that don't happen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, now you're doing okay now, right? You don't have a 400 blood sugar. I don't have what? 400 blood sugar tonight, no. do you? No, it's going you're down. Okay. It was 200 and something this okay. morning. It's usually higher of the morning. Oh, really? Yeah, it's usually higher of the morning. You're on a high dose of metformin, huh? Uh, yeah, a.m. and p.m. Okay. Well, maybe I'll have some ideas tonight that'll be helpful. You can good. try. Good. Yeah. I'm open. Okay. Good. It may just be us, Margaret. Who knows? But if you guys are here, I'll I'll give it. That way, I can put it on YouTube and get a thousand people to see it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure people watch it. Oh yeah. If they're not here, I'm sure they yeah. watch it. Yeah. Because apparently, diabetes is getting worse. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot bad. of people don't even know. Yeah. And then, then I had a couple of friends. They were on diabetes. I mean, they were on. They had diabetes. They were eating like anybody on the street. Would oh, eat. of course. But they don't pay attention. They no. Don't, no. They and don't they're not. They won't live themselves. as long either. Yeah. You know, it just depends on how long you want to live. Eat too much fruit. Yeah. Like I had blueberries for breakfast. Okay, well that's good. I mean, that's a.m. at least. It's yeah. A.m. And. And I, when I drink tea, no sugar. Yeah. Just lemon. Yeah. But I, I could. Okay. How bad is, um, because cause I didn't used to drink coffee, but I heard it's good for the brain. Well, you know what that means. So I start. I didn't like coffee, and I tried cinnamon in it. I tried everything in it because yeah. I'm not a coffee drinker. Oh. Well, then I come across, like, some of this protein drink that yeah. gives, you know, and then also half and half. Okay. So, Does that work? Well, it's good. At Are you least putting protein coffee. drink? You putting protein in it? Yeah. Okay. Like Doctor Axe, you know, okay. he advertises on yeah. TV. I I put that in it, and now I ran out of that, so I got this protein stuff. My daughter said that she's seen that on TV, and it's got high appraisal ratings. So yeah. I, I bought that, and I was using that till I got me some more Doctor Axe. But I have to doctor. I have to. Have doctor you? Are you coffee. taking collagen? Have you tried collagen? That's what it is. Oh, is it collagen? Mm -hmm. Okay. And and so sometimes for supper I'll just open a package of mixed vegetables. Okay, you know, hey, that's very good. Well, yeah, and yeah, because yeah. I like vegetables. But somebody okay. said, who told me this? Somebody said, I can't remember. I'm gonna have to start taking notes because my brain's not too good. Okay. So what is it that's good for the brain? Do you know? Uh, High diabetes is causing this brain problem too. The brain fog. Oh yeah. Sure. Probably it's well, I know what, what's good for it is sleep. Well, maybe, good maybe I sleep. don't get enough sleep. I don't know, but, but I'll know, talk about it tonight. I want to tell you, I think. 
think since my blood sugar's been up, I'm having more trouble. Oh yeah. Trying to oh yeah, it, it messes you up. There's Mary. Mary, I don't know how many's going to be here, but at seven o'clock we're getting started, and I'm glad you're here. You've I got didn't nine say minutes. Quite se oh, I was going to say it wasn't quite seven. Yeah, you've got nine minutes. Oh. Are you? Well, there's plenty of ministry opportunities that they can join and learn. Is there? I was talking to okay? people, and I wrote down their names, and I said I'm praying for them. One, one, Anyone uh, have diabetes that you met? They didn't say. Uh, yeah. One lady had pancreatic cancer. Really? Yeah. He comes all the way from Oh, that, that could be, that could cause problems there. They're staying in a yeah. the hotel and they're Indian people. Oh, okay. But now it's probably, you'd almost think. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot of them Cherokee, them. probably. Yeah. Well, I was telling Carolyn, my dad had the same problem went through all the treatments and this was years ago i don't know if it's the same treatments but it worked for him after 30 some odd treatments Proton therapy. probably yeah. it was probably what it was that, this is a big building they built that up here on memorial road yeah and it's memorial road in uh, in parker if you're familiar with Oklahoma City. it's way oh over, yeah long way from us <laughs> yeah it'd be even longer if somebody's down here but yeah, that's quite a ways. And it's a lot of walking because they have that building and it's, it's connected to improvers. So when I walk, I walk through the building and it's all in one. So I go just all the way to the other it's side. It's Integris Cancer so, Center. Yeah. Oh, it's called the Integris well, Cancer It's not the Baptist. Year. It's not the Baptist. You're talking about farther out. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. farther out. Yeah. Well, that's good. You take your walker with you and... Uh -huh. Yeah, Get she, your walk in. Yeah. She's really using the time well. Yeah, she is. <laughs> well, I'm only, it only takes about 20 minutes, that treatment. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have to get there early because I have to get ready for it. Yeah. I was really shy about lowering my pants because <laughs> it's all women, you know what I mean? But I have a sheet to cover them. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's for your treatment. Yeah. Well, uh, does it feel comfortable in here to you? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's it's about seventy eight in here. The <laughs> AC's running. Yeah, but we don't have a crowd, so yeah. Barbara uh, chickened out, went home. She didn't stay. She was up in here, and then she oh, the storm's coming and all that. Well, okay. Well, we thought talked about it, and we don't want to get our car repaired. Oh no! Yeah. But we think we just rely on the Lord. Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, just rely on the Lord. Well, you've got insurance too, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm in, I'm a prison. <laughs> yeah, I'm triple A right now. We'll wait five more minutes. Maybe the couple will come in, David and Key, yeah. Key Win. But I don't know if anyone else is coming. The two older gentlemen, Cleo and. And Mark, I don't know, I called him last week and said, hey, canceling, got a storm coming. It, it came yeah. last week. It, they, that was a good call. They didn't get their call. Uh, they got their call. Okay. I told them this week. And maybe they see the watching the weather. If they're watching David Payne. They're not coming. Yeah. Well, he's, always, he's always so hyperactive. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> we've talked about that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My sister worked at Channel 9 back when David Grant was there. Really? A long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember Gary England. But yeah. yeah. He was before. Grant. Yeah, yeah. That's going way back.
Now, when I stand up there, Mary, I want you to look on this right here and see if you can see me to the side. I'm going to go stand up here. Can you see me standing there? You can get up from your seat if you need to. <laughs> you can see me. Yeah, that's where I want it. I want to be in the corner. Okay. Yeah. Just so you can see me, that's all. We're going to get started here in about two minutes. And uh, there might be another couple that comes in, but... Is everybody on vacation? Well, there's two other guys, that, uh, three other guys that might have shown up, but they're probably watching David Payne. Weather. Oh, yeah. oh. Scared. He got scared away. change in an hour's time. I know. It's the same old we should be through, and yeah. hopefully you have time to get home before it starts raining. If it does, okay. it could go to the north to Dell City or somewhere and <laughs> avoid you. <laughs> yeah. That's the way they're driving. But, I wish it would rain. You do rain. Yeah. Well, I just mowed my, my front yard. and it looks nice and green right now. It'll look, continue to look I green. I know you were in Arkansas when I... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And next week, we're going to visit our grandchildren again. Yeah, we'll be gone on the 4th of July time period there. We've got a granddaughter now. And, uh, and she's, she's about three months old. And we've got a uh, five-year-old grandson. So that's it. That's what we've got. They live, you know where Eureka Springs is? Arkansas? Right past that, there's Berryville. It's right next door to it. That's where that, it's nice country. Beautiful country around there. Now I'm going to wait two more minutes. They may walk in right before I get started here. Is that one of your sons that helped yeah. you with all, all this stuff? Number one of them. Uh, both of them have helped me. Some, yeah. Seventy-eight. I think we'll go ahead and get started. So, okay, we're getting started now. Cato the Elder started learning Greek when he was more than 80 years old. Someone asked him, why are you starting such an arduous task at that age? And he said, it's the earliest age I have left. And that's good. I like that attitude, don't you? I like the attitude that you can still learn no matter what your age is. We need help and we need motivation. And so I want to give you three points tonight, tools, fasting, and snacks. And I'm going to start with this about being motivated and the help that we need. You've probably heard sayings about the importance of time. He was in the right place at the right time. Or her timing was perfect. Is timing everything? The following illustration shows its importance. If she can't stop the stroller, the results could be devastating. We see her here with enormous effort trying to grab hold of the stroller, but she stumbles to her knees. She tries to get up, but stumbles again, and then starts getting up again. Have you ever felt helpless? to accomplish, accomplish something that's so important. It was to save her great nephew. A surveillance video from the car wash shows this, and that street is packed with ongoing traffic. And so, there's a saying, he was at the right place at the right time. And it comes true. An unknown man appears in the video and rescues the child. Yes, we need help. And there are two outstanding, but well, in fact, three outstanding books that I want you to read that will change your life and your health. One's the Bible, of course. But here's the other two. This is one, Glucose Revolution, the life-changing power of balancing your blood sugar. And secondly, the Diabetes Code, 
prevent and reverse type 2 diabetes naturally. And I'm going to have some of the information for both of those books in this presentation tonight. Yogi Berra on travel gear said, why buy good luggage? You only use it when you travel. <laughs> I'll tell you. Wisdom. My words are health to one's whole body. That's what the proverb says. Are there really some tools I can use that can help me feel better and get my blood glucose under control? From the strength of an ox comes an abundant harvest. Well, I don't have any ox, and I don't intend to get an ox, but what's the point? The broader meaning is that we use the right equipment to get the best results. And what is the right equipment? Well, it could be smaller plates when you eat, scales, measuring cups, labels, comfortable shoes, glucose meters or CGMs, clock timing, pedometers and health trackers like Fitbits, dumbbells. All of those things can be valuable and helpful. So wisdom is a skill for living. Someone says, I will put the same amount of food on a plate no matter what size the plate is. Well, the simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. There was a study done at a movie theater, popcorn for everyone who attended. It was at 1.05 in the afternoon, after a, right, you know, right after lunch, right at the right time, and people were given two sizes of boxes of popcorn. They didn't realize the popcorn was popped five days before, but it was kept in a sterile condition. I'm sure it tasted like wax or something. But, but anyway, whenever you look at this, the question is, do you think that you ate more because you had the large size box or the medium size? Well, people who were given the big buckets ate 53% more than those with the smaller size and 173 more calories than the medium-sized buckets. Now, a lot of them probably had lunch before they came for the, for the uh, theater, but they ate that much. They just, you know, automatically, and they were to bring back what was left, and that's how they determined this. If they answer a few concession stand, you know, they would get these free uh, boxes of popcorn plus a small drink. But does plate size make a difference? Here's an interesting little video I want to share with you. <laughs> now, one obvious thing here is that, that we, have a pro we have really approximately the same meal. Yeah. So I've got a few onions you don't have. But your plate is about twice as big as mine. What does that do? Well, what happens is that we find that when people serve themselves under a, under a bigger plate, you end up putting a lot more food on, typically about 30% more. Because, look, I mean, that looks like a really nice big meal. This, yeah. geez, this looks like barely an appetizer. In fact... <laughs> make these plates look similarly full, I mean, I'm going to have to add a few more potatoes. Now, I think it's looking a little bit better now. But so, this, yeah, so we make judgments based on whether there's empty spaces there? Yeah, it's a very subtle bias because what it does, is it suggests to us what the appropriate amount is to eat. And regardless of how tuned in we think we are to our eating decisions, we will serve 25 to 35 percent more under a larger plate than we will a small That's plate. That's a huge amount, though, 25 to 35 percent. It's unbelievable. In some cases, with some foods, it can be up to about a hundred. Anyway, did you get the idea? Tip for filling full. Which center middle dot is bigger? Now, there's kind of an illusion here. I'm taking the one from the right over to the left. Same. It's the same. And whenever you look at these plates, they have the same amount of food, and yet one looks like it's full, a full plate. And you look at this, the large plate, the smaller plate, well, yes, it's exactly the same. So the way of wisdom says the wise in heart are called discerning. So the idea is use the middle size plate. Just automatically use it. It's helpful. And then people are so used to supersizing when they eat out that it's easy to carry that mindset home. To right size your diet, use a kitchen scale and measuring cups to measure your meals for a week or two. And use smaller plates and glasses to downsize your portions. Split restaurant servings and in half. And making two meals out of one is a big deal. And so portion out snack servings instead of eating them directly from the container. And another thing that we look at here is how many fiber, how many carbs there is and how many fibers there are. 
Well, I see about five in these oats there. You subtract the fiber. See, an all brand, you probably don't like all brand anyway, but it's got a major part of it is fiber there. What about sugar alcohol? Have you ever seen that on the label? Sugar alcohol? We only digest about half of it. And so we have an example here. If you ever see sugar alcohol, you would take you don't subtract the whole thing, you just subtract half of it because part of it is metabolized. So for the Lord gives wisdom in his mouth, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. Well, he gives us these wisdom teachings. And what we need to do is apply them to our lives and make discernment. Like, we need to walk. So let's have comfortable shoes to walk in. And I like to use sketchers. Any benefits for using a pedometer or a health tracker? Well, I see several benefits. You can see what progress you're making during the day. I've got a goal of 10,000 steps a day, and I'm at 7,856 right now. And so that goes my progress, and my motivation is to get another 2,000 in before the day's over. And the accuracy of it is good. And so you can get a pedometer, you can get a health, you know, like a Fitbit to help you along. Dr. Todd Mitchell, he's like most doctors. I always consider myself busy and active at work. I'm up and down and all around seeing patients day long. I clipped on a step counter. I checked the step counter at noon and I had only taken 500 steps in four hours. And it took the step counter to open my eyes to the de deceptively sedentary nature of my work. But he was going to try to get more steps in now. A cardiologist was dismayed at how few steps her patients were taking. She gave them pedometers and they couldn't see the amount of steps, but they could report it later. And they averaged about a thousand steps a day. Now these are heart patients. You can see why. <laughs> pedometers proved to increase movement. And so there were two different groups. The pedometer group with 10,000 steps per day, that group. And another group that was just to take a 30 brisk 30-minute brisk walk per day. But you know what the results were? Well, the group using the pedometers averaged over 10,000 steps per day, while the 30-minute walking group only walked an average of 8,270 steps, the difference of about a mile per day. Of course, they were wearing pedometers, but they couldn't see the, the amount of steps they were taking. Any benefits for using a pedometer? Well, from that study that you see at the bottom of the page, the Diabetes in Control study, they found these results from using a pedometer. I reduced my stress levels. It was very easy to just put on the pedometer and check it during the day. It really works. And my blood pressure is down to normal. My clothes all fit better. Well, must be losing some weight. And my dog is healthier than ever. Now, I wore the pedometer, not the dog, said the person. But health tracker features. And this, I'm going to go over the, the Fitbit Charge 5 here just to give you a few examples. The Fitbit Charge 5 is a fitness motivator. In addition to the expected step tracking and reminders to move when you've been sitting too long, using the tracker outside for walks, runs, and bike rides is easy. Thanks to its increased brightness, you will find the, the screen is easy to read and responsive to your touch even while you may drip in sweat. So the Fitbit charges five sleep tracking features are accurate and helpful in improving my sleep cycle. It breaks down your, your sleep into compartments, like the time that you're awake or in light, deep, or rapid eye movement sleep, the REM sleep. The heart rate and estimated oxygen variation can also indicate breathing disturbances while sleeping. It's an all-around fitness tracker. So my wife has one now. She uses it when she takes a walk, but she uses it for sleep primarily. And these are the results. This is what you get on your app on your phone. You see the kind of, you, you break it down into four compartments there, and you can see the, the amounts on this person. But then you get a score. Uh, today I had a, a 77 or something like that. It wasn't that great. That's called fair. 
But if you get in the 80s, then you have a good score. If you get in the 90s, you have an excellent night of sleep. And so these are wonderful tools to use to make sure that you're sleeping correctly. That's a big part of taking care of ourselves and managing our diabetes is the sleep that we get each night. Now there's a new medication that I want to tell you about. Ozempic is one. Or you may have seen this one advertised also. Ozempic is a new medication that has brought wonderful results for people with type 2 diabetes, including losing weight. We have one person who takes a daily injection and is doing much better with blood sugar control and with supposed hunger resulting in tremendous weight loss. How does Ozempic work? Ozempic increases insulin sensitivity while inhibiting the liver from releasing glucagon to help lower blood sugar levels. It also suppresses appetite and slows digestion, causing many people to lose weight. Due to its long duration of action, it is only taken once per week, which makes it convenient. Although not approved for type 1 diabetes, doctors may prescribe Ozempic and other GLP-1 agonists off-label for type 1 diabetes. And this may help them better manage blood sugar levels and help to reduce insulin resistance. So we have one person who has come to these meetings who is at normal weight now because she got on that and she got off of her insulin. She's doing fantastic. Here's a person. Does Ozempic really cause weight loss? It's important to note that Ozempic is specifically approved by the FDA for diabetes and not weight loss, but the same medication under a different name, Wegovy, is approved for weight loss and maintenance. However, it's difficult to have insurance cover it, but by taking Ozempic in higher doses, it has the same weight loss effects as Wegovy and often comes with a much needed insurance coverage. And so here's a person, studies prove Ozempic causes weight loss. One such study showed that participants in a trial lost between 10 to 15% of their body weight over a little more than a year with weekly Ozempic injections when used in combination with healthy eating and exercise. In the placebo group, only 2% of people lost weight. But in the Ozempic group, about 75% of the people lost 5% or more of their body weight. And so that is a medication you can consider. Here's another one. Fasting. Our second way to manage diabetes by fasting and motivation. One father named Daniel in the northern regions of Canada needs to lose 80 pounds. And when he starts, he says things like this, that I was determined, I put my mind into it, I'm going to do it, and I went at it. He didn't let the frigid conditions in which he lives in Arviat, Canada, keep him from accomplishing his goal. July's average temperature is 58, while December to March's average high temperature is 2. Two, and you can see where it is. One father named Daniel continued this, and he had the willpower of losing 80 pounds in the frigid Canada, and he did it in two ways, avoiding sugar, that is carbohydrates, and walking more than three miles daily. And if polar bears were in the village, and it was too cold to walk outdoors, well, he would go to the gym. They have a gym there. After 13 months, he went from 275 pounds to 195 pounds to reach his goal. He seems like a man with a lot of willpower. Some view willpower as the key to getting things done, but a person has to have the motivation to have the will to get things done. Daniel needed to lose 80 pounds because of his weight of 275 pounds. It was too much for a candidate to... to to offer their kidney for a kidney transplant. Well, we discovered his teenage son, Hunter, has a stage 5 kidney condition, and his kidneys are functioning at only 16% capacity. He needs a new kidney, and his father is a match. And so let me add 
the motivation I left out of a previously mentioned sentence. He said, I was determined, I really love Him, was His motivation bringing the willpower to lose His weight. Now going way back, man eats too much. Thus he lives on only a quarter of what he consumes. The doctors, however, live on the remaining three quarters, said an ancient Egyptian doctor. Can you imagine when well, you get all that extra fat and you're not using it and it's just sitting there and it's weighing you down? That's the idea. There are multitudes of diseases which have their origin in fullness and might have their end in fasting. And so, those who seek me find me, says wisdom. A person says, I lose weight, but then hit a barrier. Stop losing and gain it back. What can I do besides give up? Well, Jesus talks about spiritual fasting, but it also contributes to physical fasting, obviously. Now, whenever you fast, do not make a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they distort their faces so that they may be noticed by people when they are fasting. That's not the purpose of it, to show your self-righteousness. But what are two ways to keep insulin levels low? Because with more insulin, you tend to gain weight. You do. One of them is fasting. And fasting and eating fewer carbohydrates are the two ways to keep insulin levels low. There's no food for insulin to metabolize. That is to change food into a form that your body can use like carbohydrates to glucose. No need for insulin production because you're not eating. Well, here's what has been written from history about fasting. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. We're talking about Jesus. So Jesus shows up, shows us, that he could resist the desires of the physical body in order to achieve great things. He started his ministry after 40 days of fasting. And after 40 days, Satan came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Matthew 4. Jesus was weak, Jesus was hungry, but he said, It is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And here's what others have said about fasting. Fasting is the greatest remedy the physician within. And this is a person that uh, wrote that in 1541, one of the three fathers of Western medicine, that person. Instead of using medicine, better fast today, said Plutarch, the great biographer and moralist. And the best of all medicines is resting and fasting, said Benjamin Franklin. Everyone has a doctor in him. We must have to help him in his work. The doctor within us. Help him with his work. The natural healing force within each of us is the greatest force in getting well. To eat when you're sick is to feed your sickness, so said Hippocrates, one of the three fathers of Western medicine. I fast for greater physical and mental efficiency, says Plato. And here's what a modern doctor says, Dr. Joel Furman. The body's wondrous ability to autolyze, that is for self-digest, and destroy needless tissues such as fat, tumors, blood vessel plaque, and other non-essential and diseased tissues while conserving essential tissues, gives the fast the ability to restore physiologic, physiologic youth to the system by removing or lessening the burden of diseased tissue, including the fatty tissue, narrowing the blood vessels. Fasting increases the blood flow and subsequent oxy, oxygenation and nutrient delivery to vital organs throughout the body. Well, I hope you understood that. But it's helpful, he's trying to say. And so, insulin promotes the storage of micronutrients, helping convert amino acids into protein and carbohydrates into either glucagon or, if you have too, too much, fat. But, when the insulin level rises, it stops burning fat for fuel and increases storing 
incoming food as fat. And so that's why as long as the diet is high in carbohydrates, the body never has a chance to burn fat, making weight loss difficult. However, limiting carb consumption stimulates increased fat burning and decreased fat storage. And there are about, how many carbs are there in this picture, would you say? How many grams would you say there are? Do you see any carbs on that picture? in that picture? The berries. That's about it. You might get a couple up here from the vegetables, but maybe one gram maybe 10 altogether on this, this plate. But this is a little bit different plate here. In the 1400s, the term breakfast was popularized because it describes what is happening when you eat in the morning. You break the fast. The old English word for dinner was dinner, And that word actually means to break a fast. Why? Because dinner after a long day's work was often the first and only meal eaten. It wasn't until the late 15th century that the term breakfast for a morning meal came into use. Now there's research that's been done at the University of Alabama, and they had early time-restricted eating. They studied overweight people on two different eating schedules. One was eating from 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening, and the other only from 8 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. And they discovered that more fat was burned by eating during a smaller window of time, the second category. And their research indicated more fat was burned during the night with fewer food cravings during the day. So can changing the meal schedule be effective in lowering appetite and improve fat burning? We suspect that a majority of people may find meal timing strategies helpful for losing weight or to maintain their weight since these strategies naturally appear to curb appetite, which may help people eat less. And so, I've used this idea to eat my last meal early in the day, and especially to not eat after the last meal of the day. I maintain better blood glucose control when I can follow this schedule. Do your own research. Try avoiding snacks during the evening and before bed and see if your blood glucose improves. Now, I'm not always able to do so because of my blood sugar levels getting too low before bedtime and I can't go to bed with an 80 milligrams per deciliter, especially when I know that the level will drop. So I have to break the fast already. And I don't know what's going to happen tonight, but maybe I'll succeed. But the idea is... After trying time-restricted eating in the evening, you could continue to restrict your eating all morning. In other words, do some fasting until noon or 1 o'clock. Then you would have a window of eating for the next six hours. And I've done this with success for better blood sugar control and some weight loss. And there are several things to consider when trying an 18-6 or a 16-8, that is fasting for 16 to 18 hours, and then having a window of eating or feeding for six to eight hours. And I think most of us can handle that schedule. Well, 16 hours may seem long, but if you're getting adequate sleep, you should be asleep for about seven hours of that time. And these characteristics will apply like knowledge, self-control, perseverance, and hope for fasting. And they're all wisdom principles from God's Word. So here's the first one has to do with knowledge. Wise people have success by means of great power. Those who, those who have knowledge gather strength. So continuing to fast after an evening of time-restricted eating is an easy way to start to fast because you already have a night's nice head start on it. Now during the morning, Having no calories that could stimulate insulin and eat food for energy production, that's what will happen. When we eat, our energy source comes from carbohydrates the body converts into glucose, 
Any glucose that we don't utilize for energy, the body converts into glycogen stored in the liver. And if we overeat and our glycogen stores are full, the carbs are converted to fat. So when you fast, you are not feeding your body carbs. How many times a week should you fast for 16 to 18 hours? As many as you, you can manage. That's how. Now since I have type 1 diabetes, it depends on how I do in the evening. And if I've calculated the grams of carbohydrate and the insulin that I take, and my blood glucose keeps from getting low, I can fast. I watch my blood glucose with my continuous glucose monitor and lower my basal dose that I give. However, if you have type 1 diabetes, it's important to remember that ketone levels may rise when you're not eating. And this may be a challenge if you need more basal insulin and depend on meal time insulin to avoid high levels of ketones. The good news is that you can measure your ketone levels. And it's also essential to monitor blood glucose levels. Hypoglycemia is a risk of fasting. So I've got this, and I checked myself the other day, and I was, right, I'll show you where I was. Right there. There wasn't anything. But Benjamin Horn, Dr. Benjamin Horn, gives this caution for those with type 2 diabetes on medications. That if you're taking medications that are aimed at reducing the amount of glucose in your blood together with fasting, these can cause potentially fa uh, fatal hypoglycemia, low blood sugars. Horn says that it's not a minor safety risk. So consult your healthcare team before trying this, that if you're on medications to control your blood glucose levels, talk about it, you know. So that had to do with knowledge. Self-control, do I have enough self-control to fast? Now this proverb says, like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. City walls were defense mechanisms for ancient cities to defend themselves and keep enemies out. Since many people have breakfast during the morning, how can they manage the hunger pains if they fast? Well, by drinking water and other no-calorie beverages like plain coffee or tea, you will be surprised at how you can ward off hunger pains and experience self-controlled and be self-controlled by simply drinking non-calorie fluids. And so that's self-control. What about persevering? Another thing that we need to do during those morning hours is not succumb to temptations. Keep snack food out of reach and out of sight. By doing this, you can persevere and reap great rewards for your health. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up, according to Galatians chapter 6. So what's happening as you're fasting? What, what is happening to your body as you fast? It helps to know so that you can endure and not give up. Here's a basic outline of what I've read happens. For the first eight hours, blood sugars fall. Food has left the stomach and the body produces minimal insulin for basal metabolism, like breathing and the heart. Does your BMR stop working during sickness? Well, of course not. But you may not be eating, you may be fasting during that time. But does the... So we find that Dr. Uh, Dresden says this, is the amount of energy required to support the work, the heart, the brain, lungs, and other organs at rest, in the absence of any physical or mental exertion, is the basal metabolic rate. That's what it is. And you always have to have that going, don't you? Energy for that. And so if you look at this, food consumed has been burned, the digestive system goes to sleep, the body begins he a healing process, human growth hormone, hormone, hormone begins to increase, and glucagon is relaxed to balance blood sugars during 12, the 12th and 13th hours of fasting. And after 14 hours, 
the body is converted to using stored fat as energy, and human growth hormone starts to increase dramatically. And here are six benefits of increased growth hormone. We find that there's an increased muscle strength, there's better fracture healing, there is enhanced weight loss, there's stronger bones, there is reduced heart disease risk, and there is a better mood and sleep that you experience. And so, we need hope. Hope's not wishful thinking. To lose weight, have you ever experienced your body having a plateau effect? You get to a certain weight loss, and then you can't seem to lose another pound. And this is where fasting is so beneficial. Instead of your fat burning rate slowing down to conserve energy, it ramps up. One research study showed an increase of 12%. And here's another important result of following intermittent fasting. It makes it easier to maintain the weight you lose over the long term. A two-part study of 40 overweight people published in a certain magazine in 2016 compared the combined effects of a high-protein, low-calorie, intermittent fasting diet plan with a traditional heart healing diet plan. And the results showed that while both diets proved to be equally successful in reductions in body mass index and blood lipids, fatty acids and cholesterol, those on the intermittent fasting diet showed an advantage in minimizing regaining weight after one year. So here's some, you know, here's, here's another benefit called hope, not wishful thinking. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life, Proverbs 13. One person in our diabetes meetings uses intermittent fasting daily and needs a new wardrobe because of weight loss. I call that hope, not just wishful thinking. Fasting works for a healthier life. The following two pictures show weight loss results from fasting. Well, that's the first picture. And here's another picture right there. Now, there's one more thing. Here I am talking about fasting, and now I'm going to talk about snacks. <laughs> what about eating snacks? We need to have the right perspective for daily living and this story shows it. I want to give you this story first. In 2005, he was told that he had one year to live. 18 years later, he's thriving, is the title of a story that I saw. As a 12-year-old boy, he was having issues with keeping his food down in 2005. His mother became concerned and took him to the doctor and told them it should subside. He told them it should subside soon, but it didn't. And so she took him to the ER. The doctor ordered a CAT scan and a devastating diagnosis came back, a cancerous brain tumor. The doctor urged them to have it surgically removed as soon as possible. And it was with radiation treatments to take care of the, what was left. His tumor was so rare, only three others had been found, and the news was devastating. They lived only one to two years after discovery. And so while he was a child with a short time to live, the Make-A-Wish Foundation offered him one of his wishes, go to Hawaii. And even though the surgery and the radiation treatment eliminated the cancer, he still had to have an annual MRI visit. And the proverb came true, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Each year he had to anxiously await the results of the MRI. And because of his radiation treatment, he ended up with a side effect of short-term memory loss, and he has learned to deal with this by taking notes daily, repetition, and setting reminders. He says his long-term memory is fine, but this story doesn't end in tragedy. This is a good news story, and that's why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> he was released from his MRI visit after 18 years. And he's thriving now. He had successful brain surgery, removing the tumor. He's married, the father of a nine-month-old, a two-year-old. And I read this story. One of the most important changes that he made was how he used his time each day. His philosophy had been, 
time you enjoy wasting is never wasted. And he lived by it. He didn't feel he needed to make long-term plans like career and, and retirement. And those things don't matter to a 17-year-old who might not live to be 20. But here is what he believes now. After a successful brain surgery, removing the cancerous tumor, and just being released after 18 years from an annual MRI test, his attitude is this. He says, I want to live as long as possible to see them grow old, the two-year-old and the one-year-old. I want to eat healthy and exercise so that I can play with them throughout their whole childhood. I want to see what sort of people they become. He is now motivated by the truth of the second part of the proverb, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I like his perspective on his life of wanting to eat healthy and exercise. But if you're going to have a long, a long, a longing fulfilled, maybe snacks will help only after you consider this vital information. Here comes this vital information. Don't eat those. That's not a snack to eat. Make plans by seeking advice. If you wage war, obtain guidance. Of course, we're waging war. Proverbs 20. We all like snacks, but some snacks are unhealthy, like donut holes. So to win the war against poor health, we need guidance or advice to make wise choices for snacks. If you follow an intermittent fasting schedule, like 16 or 18 hours, you only have six to eight hour window of eating. And that's the first factor that you've got to consider. And no snacks that will break your fast. You will drink black coffee, tea, or water, and non-calorie flavoring during the fast. But knowledge is knowing a tomato or avocado is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. Knowledge is knowing donuts, donut holes, chips, pretzels, and a bucket of buttered popcorn at the theater are snacks. Wisdom is replacing them with healthy snacks or no snacks. What are some good snacks to eat? Well, I would cautiously eat fresh fruits in small quantities because they stimulate insulin production. So when eating an apple, it should be a small portion like half or a cup or four ounces of cherries, half of a grapefruit, 12 or fewer grapes, and half of an orange, peach, or pear. And these are good snacks from the criteria being low glycemic index. They don't drive up blood sugars. It takes longer to metabolize. But wisdom, the skill for living, tells us this. You know, I, a donut hole is comforting food and you can't eat just one. Unless you just have one. But here's a proverb. From the fruit of their mouths, people's stomachs are filled. With a harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. What does that mean? It means that you will have to live with the consequences of everything you say. And we'll have to live with the consequences of everything we eat too. In other words, eat the right kinds of foods in the right amount. So take, for example, a donut hole. Do you see how many calories it has? 52 calories. Do you see how many uh, fibers it's got? Next to nothing. No fiber. Well, what about strawberries? Well, here is five ounces of strawberries. 46 calories. Do you see how many fiber there is? Almost three grams of fiber. And so you multiply that by four. Three times four is 12. And you subtract the, the 12 from the 46, you've got 34 calories altogether compared to 52 with one donut hole. And the strawberries are going to fill you up much better than any donut hole ever will. And so, here are some good... Uh, I've heard that people have eaten these as a snack. Raw vegetables are even better as good snacks. You eat them with a lower fat dip or with different flavored mustards or just like, you know, by themselves. At our diabetes support group, one person told me she's enjoying eating radishes and losing weight. Radishes? 
Yes, she's eating radishes. Radishes are rich in fiber, vitamin C, and potassium. One cup of raw radishes has only 19 calories and 4 grams of carbohydrate. But half of those are fiber. So another person said that he's been eating mushrooms and has noticed better blood glucose control. Mushrooms have 23 calories for one cup and 2 grams of carbohydrate. And they also have anti-inflammatory these are anti-inflammatory foods. They fight against breaking your uh, good cells down. And so radishes and mushrooms are much better choices than potato chips and pretzels. They are more filling. Radishes are about 90% water. In comparison, potato chips have about 2% water. One serving, 28 grams of chips, has 160 calories, 15 grams of carbohydrate, 10 grams of fat, and one serving, 28 grams of of pretzels has 100 calories, 23 grams of carbohydrate. Do not eat these as snacks. I'm trying to warn you. Eat this. Here's some good choices. Deli meat wrapped in romaine lettuce leaves, low-fat cottage cheese and a little bit of fruit, a boiled egg, smoked salmon or tuna with vegetables, would all be good options. Remember the calories add up quickly in nuts like almonds, walnuts, and pecans. Portion control is essential for nuts. Again, the calories add up quickly. And so what do we need to do? Use a smaller plate. You fill your plate that way. You get benefits from, you know, health tracker pedometers, health uh, trackers like Fitbits. They show your progress. They give you motivation to meet your goal. And they also are accurate in what you're wanting. And with a health, you know, like a Fitbit here, you can monitor the kind of sleep that you have at night. And again, here's FAIR, a 78. It gives you a score. Good, 83, and 94 is excellent. If you needed to, you could check on this medication, Ozempec. Remember the weight loss variable that happened from people who took this medication? And here's some examples. But also, in eating the right kinds of snacks, we need to eat eggs, vegetables, all kinds of wonderful vegetables that you can eat. And from A to Z, what do we have here? Bell peppers, broccoli, carrots, cauliflower. Uh, is that zucchini? or eggplant. I don't know what that is. But anyway, you can use all of those and they'll fill you up and you won't get any cows, you won't stimulate in insulin production. That's it. That's all I've got and it's 12 till and it's not raining yet. What did he say? If you what? Okay, man, eat some broccoli. You'll love broccoli. Oh, okay, don't eat broccoli. What can you have? Can you have any of those vegetables that are on the uh, screen there? Okay, all right. You don't want potassium? Well, don't, don't, have, don't have radishes then. Yeah. Okay, you can, you can eat them. They won't affect your blood sugars. That's good. So did anyone learn anything tonight that you might be able to implement? You've tried what? Oh, Zimpic? Oh, you are? Yes. Have you lost weight from it? Yeah. Okay. But you're not the person I was talking about. I was talking about another person. Okay. Um, but also, I have tried the fasting. Yeah. And I have trouble with that because my uh, expert medicine. Uh, I have to take it 12 hours apart. Yeah. And that interferes. Is that the, that's as long as you can fast, is 12 hours? Because you can't take it on an empty stomach medicine yeah 
Well, the Azimpec is probably going to do what you need. Yeah. Good. How much? 84 pounds. Wow. How long have you been on a Zimpec? Been more than a year and a half. Okay. Okay, are you off your insulin now? No, I still take. Uh, You've cut back on your insulin. How much? I take the season. Yeah. And I take my 30. Okay, have you cut yeah. back on it? You shouldn't need as much. Is your blood sugars okay? Okay. That's good. All right, well, Margaret, did you learn anything you could put into practice tonight? <laughs> Eat more vegetables? Do you have a good night's rest? You could extend it and try it till noon and not, not have breakfast. Have breakfast at noon. Yeah. Try that. You could try it. That might be helpful. Now, I don't think your metformin is going to affect that. Any. That suppresses the release of uh, glucagon. And if you... You got to, You can check your blood sugars. You've got a monitor, Margaret. I'm talking to you. You have a monitor. Yes. Okay. All right, Mary. I've heard a lot of that. Metformin. That's what. You take metformin. Okay. And over the years, Well, are you taking the 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 top dose of it, or are you taking the the most you can take, like two thousand? Are you? Okay. Have you? Yeah. Your blood sugar's okay. It, it most of the time it is. It depends on what I eat. Yeah. It depends on what I eat. Yeah. yeah I have you tried fasting at night? I mean, you have your your supper, and then you're not going to eat yeah, anymore. That's your cutting off kind. And then you don't eat until breakfast. Try just try to try to skip breakfast and put it extend it because your body will start using any fat that you have for energy during that time. If you can extend it on out to fourteen hours and then sixteen, it, it's beneficial that way. You could try it, but David, are you still doing the intermittent fasting? Five days a week. You still losing some weight? Probably. Oh, you don't weigh yourself? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, the next meeting is going to be July 27th. Okay? So be sure and come back for that. And um, then we may skip August and then go September and October. Because I've got a, a major event in August. We've got a family reunion. <laughs> now, when's the new grandbaby due? It's already come. Oh, it's already come. February 24th. Oh, that's We're going to go visit them next week, next weekend. Yeah, that's a granddaughter. Oh. And then on May, 20, uh, May 14th, we went over to visit them. And that's our grandson's fifth birthday, so we were there for that. Okay. And she was three months old, approximately. Okay. So we're going back over there next weekend. To visit again, oh, what a and treat. yeah, it is a treat. I never knew I'd have two grandchildren, but I've got two now. We do, that is. But I want to thank you for coming tonight. We had one per Barbara. She backed out. She got afraid of the weather. Didn't I didn't come. See a weather forecast. I didn't see yeah. Weather. Well, some people watching David Payne probably got scared. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Diabetes code and glucose revolution. Yeah. Glucose revolution. Uh, in fact, there's a there's a subtitle to that. Hang on, hang on a second. Let me get back over there. Uh oh.
Now, if you, uh, if you were to get this glucose revolution, she really talks a lot about uh, fiber, importance of eating fiber, and the, 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 you eat your carbs last. You eat your fiber, protein, and then carbs last. Because that's what she's, the glucose revolution, life changing, balancing your blood sugar. And that's the main theme. Dr. Uh, Bam, I think his name, Diabetes Code, he really talks about fasting in there. Both of those books are ex excellent, and I recommend them. Oh, you know, I don't even have it on the screen, do I? Hang on a second. I want you to see that. There we go. Now you see it. Life-changing power of balancing your blood sugar. That's a subheading. And that's the subheading there. Prevent and reverse type 2 diabetes naturally. There. And I think they might be available at the library. I don't know. Diabetes code? Probably. But I don't know about the other one. I know you can order it at a bookstore, though. Does it count your sleep? It does count my sleep, but you know, I didn't check it today, so I, I think I need to actually use it to track my sleep. Yeah. Well, are you, are you doing that? You're not. You haven't been doing that. You haven't been checking your sleep. Does it break it down into different compartments too? That's not the Fitbit. That's something different. What is that? It's a Garmin. Okay, the Garmin probably has the same thing. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Well, use that, boy. That that's yeah. a big function in there. Now, I had an 86 the night before, and then last night I had a 76. And it's because I've got this sensor that I put on, and you have to calibrate it. And I had to calibrate the stupid thing at 4.15 this morning. I had to get up, and I had a hard time getting back to sleep and all that. And that just confused the whole night, you know. Because it tells me to. It stops working if you don't calibrate it. But Medtronic has now come up with a new sensor that you don't have to calibrate at all. Well, it's it's the new one, the Guardian 5 or something like that. But I'm looking forward to getting getting that. I've got it ordered. So I'm looking forward to that. 